Hi guys, if you didn't do it yet, please subscribe to the channel so you will get notifications for all the new videos to come and it keeps me going. Thank you very much. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thomas Love here from beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia and today we're gonna discuss the motion, how to portray movements in photography. The first and easiest kind of motion portraiture in photography is to freeze the motion. So this is called suspended movement. If you want to freeze the action you see in the city, when you're walking downtown and you want to freeze the action, you want to capture that moment, you need to have a fast enough shutter speed. We saw it many times already with plenty of examples throughout the other videos. You just need to be fast enough. So if your subject is moving, you need to be sure that your shutter speed is at least 1 over 2 50th of a second if it's a walking person or a dog, 1 over 500 if it's a car or a motorbike or a bicycle passing by and if they're particularly fast, you can eventually go up to 1,000th of a second just to be sure you will not get motion blur. While the second chapter of the motion portraiture in photography is dedicated to motion blur. There are many different things you can do with motion blur. One and the most common is when you see the lines drawn by cars passing by overnight. So you see red and white lines drawn on the street. But for that you don't need to be aware of anything in particular. You don't need any specific technique. You just need to have a longer shutter speed, like one, two, three seconds, 30 seconds, whatever you feel and it is appealing to you. You can go out and practice. While with motion blur, there are some other shots that have one subject very sharp and defined and many other ones passing by that are blurry because they have motion blur. These are shots that you see most of the times taken in train stations when there is one subject still because he is reading the phone, the newspaper, whatever, and all the other ones are just passing by. But today I would like to discuss with you about another particular shot because my students keep asking me how can I do that shot, I want to do that shot, so I'm sharing with you a couple of hints. And I'm referring to the shots when you have your subject passing by with a bike, with a motorbike, with a car, and that would be the only thing sharp and defined in full focus while you will see the rest of the frame with horizontal motion blur. This is not so difficult to be done in a city, it's just a matter of practice, but please allow me to go technical for one or a couple of minutes max. So the reasoning behind it, I'm drawing in something and then I will show it to you, is that all the elements that have the same distance from your camera will be in focus. So assuming that this is your camera, all the elements that are at the same distance from your focal point will appear sharp and in focus. While if you have a person passing by with a car or with a motorbike, normally uh, that person tend to go straight, right? It doesn't go around to keep the same distance from you. So going straight, you will have a couple of intersection points. So assuming that you see that person coming or that car and you focus here, the next moment that that person and that car will be in full focus and sharp and defined will be here. This is not easy, right? So what do we do? Think about mini portions of frame. So you don't want to freeze it because you want to have this motion blur, right? So the very moment that you will have a few instances of that person at the same distance would be here, right? Meaning that you have to draw again your distance. And now it will appear kind of this. These are mini portions of framing because then we will see which are the settings that you are using. But in order to have that person in focus here and motion blur, what are you supposed to do? You need to take your camera and you need to follow your subject. By following your subject you will have the same speed that your subject 
is having running passing by so that your subject will be still in focus while the rest of the world will have motion blur horizontal lines. So let's assume that we are using a shutter speed of 1 20th of a second, 1 30th of a second according to light conditions. Why is that? Because if this is the speed of your camera, if you are fast, you freeze the moment, then your subject will be in full focus but also the rest of the frame will be in full focus. While if you want to have those horizontal lines, then you need to have small portions of time. Each portion is like a vector and it's like 1 20th, 1 30th of a second. Sorry, are you still with me? I, I had to go technical for a couple of minutes. Now we go back and we show some examples. So how does it work? Bear with me, I will show you in, let's say, slow motion. So you take your camera, you focus on your subject, you follow it all along, and when you're ready, you snap a shot and you keep going. Why is that? Because 1 20th of a second, it's a very fast period of time, but still it's a period of time. So you don't want to interrupt your motion. You have to keep following your subject. If you do that, your camera shutter will stay open for the whole segment. So this is a vector. And in the intersection of your subject, your subject will be in focus. While since you were moving horizontally, the rest of the world, the rest of your frame, will have those blurriness, those blur lines, horizontal motion that you were seeking. How can we do that? How will you be ready to snap the shot before your subject enters your frame? First, you choose the F aperture. It has to be at least F11. Yesterday I was out, it was particularly bright, I had to go down to f16, otherwise I would have overexposure in my frames. But this is a limitation I'm facing with my camera because it only closes down to f16, while most of the lenses out there, probably the lens that you are using, would be go down to f22, so that's helping a lot. If it's not enough, you will have to mount an ND filter in front of it. The second thing that you want to set is the shutter speed. It needs to be at least 1 30th of a second because you have to follow your subject for an extended period of time. So 1 30th or down to 1 20th of a second. There is no rule here, so go out and try. Try many times to till the moment that you are accustomed to it with the motion, with the settings, with the procedure. You have just to go out and try. So we said F11 at least because that will give you some depth of field and then 1 30th of a second. ISO, it really depends on what kind of light you are having in that very moment. But when I'm shooting these kind of pictures, I normally go manual. So the very moment that you are at the set location that you chose to snap this picture, you see what kind of light you're having and how much you need to boost your ISO. I normally go with 50 or 100 if it's daylight and if it's overnight then of course I need to boost it a bit. So now that you have your camera set you are ready to have this picture with motion blur. Motion blur that we said already it's not just simply a long shutter speed. These are different shots. This is something peculiar of the cars and moving object. And when you see those beautiful pictures in Cars Magazine, how did they do that? That's yet a different thing because in order to have that beautiful car fully defined and the longitudinal motion blur that you see in the rest of the frame, well, that photographer was on another car going at the same speed as the car that has been portrayed. So that's a trick and not all of us are able to do that unless you have a friend with a truck and you can jump on that truck and you ask another friend to follow you and then you go at the same speed and you will get that end result. 
but this is a simulation of the same thing. But this is a trick that you can use to have that horizontal motion blur in the rest of the frame while your subject is well defined. So go out and practice, please let me know down here in the comments if that was clear and thorough enough. If you have any other doubts, just write me. So this was very fun, right? We saw some suspended movement examples, freezing the moment, we saw some tricks for motion blur, and now we arrive to the very last chapter, which is the visual flow. What is a visual flow in photography? It is as simple as a picture that pushes you to keep looking to different parts of the frame. Why? Because you have many details, because there's a visual flow of a story which is not explained in a just simple sight. Because that story that you are telling with your picture is a flow, it's a scene happening and people engaging with that picture and they're wondering what the different elements, if there is more than one, are doing. It's not very simple, of course, it's not simple. This is what we aim for each and every time we snap a shot. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the time we spent together today and a few examples that I used to talk about this technique. And if you did, please like the video, share it on your social, subscribe to the channel because it keeps me going. And I guess I will see you later. Thank you. Bye.